Yes, it's Monday, and we all know what that means by now, don't we? Yes, it's the day after the Super Bowl. Now, I don't know anything about American football or football, if you're American. Um, we don't say football, of course, because football is where you kick a ball with your foot for the entire game. So you guys call that soccer, strangely. Um, we call it football, but you call football something you hold with your hands. Anyway. It turns out because I know nothing about American football, nothing about it, right? But from a quick Google over the weekend, it appears that what happens is once a year, a team from one side of the country battles a team against the other side of the country, right? And what happens is apparently one of them, basically Taylor Swift comes out at the start and she's given a 10 minute head start and one team has to defend her. And the other one has to try and attack her. And it goes on for like 60 minutes, but there's a break every five minutes because it's like not a very athletic sport. And, you know, eventually they either find her or they don't. And then they win the Super Bowl and then they get a ring. Is that right? Is that right? Have I got that right? That's the most American thing ever, by the way. And I, I mean this in a positive way, that everyone gets a ring do you know what I mean? It's my Super Bowl ring. You know, in like, and I mean, I think that's a very good thing. We get medals, you know, what's a medal? Give me a ring so that you can walk into somewhere and people say, is that a Super Bowl ring? And you'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caught Taylor Swift back in 2018. And, um, you know, I've, I've dined out on it for weeks, nay years, because it was 2018. And Kevin has no concept of time. Anyway, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. What have we got in store for today? Well, as they've seemed to be growing in length and growing and growing, we have, again, a rather long Becker's Reddit turret corner thing. I've pointed out turrets don't have corners. She's adamant they do. But anyway, because turrets are round, aren't they? You know, I suppose you could build a square within the circle. But then we're getting into geomancy, and I have no idea what that is. Uh, we're going to review a paranormal book. Yes, we are. And um, I got it the other day, and it's about how to summon evil spirits. And I haven't used it, and I have no intention of using it. BTW, as the kids say. Or, oh, by the way, did I ever tell you the story, by the way? <laughs> BTW. About um, when I worked for, I can't say where, really. I can't. It was the benefits office, anyway. I was going to say, for a government official, it was the benefits office, anyway. And there was a guy there whose surname was By The Way. Now, I'm sure it was pronounced By The Way. Um, but I can't say his first name because I'm literally naming him on the show. But let's say it was, his middle, his middle initial was J and it was on the file. So let's say it was Peter. It was like Peter J, By The Way. And I thought, there's no way on this earth. It was, it was a pension claim too. God, you fucking, and, and here's his address. No, and, but I thought there's no way on earth, because this, I'm going back to like 97, 98. There's no way on earth this guy was not a wartime entertainer who came out. It's Peter J, by the way. Where's my washboard? You know, one of them. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope you're all having a fantastic week. I know it's Monday. So if you're not, don't worry, it's only Monday. And if you are, fucking hell, you lucky bastards, you've only been awake a few hours. Anyway, it will only get better. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say a big thank you to our newest members of Patreon. When you sign up to Patreon, not only do you support this nonsense, but you also get two shows each and every week. Yes, not many people do that, you know. I've listened to lots of podcasts, and not many, if any, give out two shows per week for patrons. You know, I've listened to many and they're like, once every two months we put out an hour long special. I'm like, fuck it now. Twice a week, I've got to sit in front of a microphone and try and find something spooky and, and never succeed. Um, so yeah, you get one, which is me rambling. As you can tell, I like the sound of my own voice. Ironically, I don't because I'd never listen back. Um, but I do like to talk. So one of them is just a ramble, which is me covering anything and everything in the news or <laughs> in the news. It's not. It's just me just waffling about random shit. Um, and the second one, we do try and be a bit more paranormal. Normally that features Becca. Again, this week it won't feature Becca. Uh, she is potentially going away again for work. So there's a, a lot, and there's, all, there's loads going on. There's loads going on, which I won't go into because it's not my place. But anyway, 
in other news, nothing really. So, a big thank you to our newest members of Patreon. If you want to join up and you want to get those two extra shows a full hour every week, 50 billion hours, there's not. But there's well over 300 hours worth of content on Patreon for you to go and binge if you like this sort of attempted comedy. Um, and I'd suggest if you do, then go and do it. Why not? Why the devil not? Anyway, head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And as an additional sort of carrot, if you will, I sing your name as a thank you. And the guitar is well and truly out. Now, this week, we only have one new Patreon. So in a very, it's quite rare when one person gets a song dedicated entirely to them. But Misty White, this little, we said we'd do grunge last week. So, but um, I have to mix it with country because I'm playing an acoustic guitar. Anyway, it's for you. Oh, Misty White, you've signed up to the Patron. That's not a grunge voice. Let me do that again. Oh, Mr. White, you signed up to the Patron. And I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my swinging breath. Oh, thank you very much. You keep in the show lights on and we want to say thank you to Misty White. Oh, oh. We say thank you to Misty White. Oh, 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 oh. That was a nice falsetto and it was E major 7 for those giving count in the corner. Anyway. As I've said before, if you'd like to become a patron, head over to patreon.com forward slash. We need to talk about ghosts. Now, let's find out about this occult book Kevin's bought, shall we? Yes, it's that point in proceedings where I give you a paranormal review about something which is paranormal so that you don't have to buy it or review it for yourself. Unless, of course, you find the review something that makes you want to do it. But you may not with this one. And if you do, I'd suggest maybe not doing... No, don't buy this if you have kids, anyway. Because what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, it's got 4.7 stars from 5, from 343 reviews on Amazon. Yes, it has. And I now own a copy of Alistair Crowley's Goetia. Yes, but it's the illustrated edition of the Goetia, the Lesser Key of Solomon. And if you're wondering which version it is, it's edited with an introduction by Arundel Overman. Now, the illustrations in this book are wonderful. They're magnificent. So we all know about the Goetic history, of course. 72 demons cast into a vial by King Solomon, hence the lesser key of Solomon, as it's otherwise known. And um, this book gives you the sigils and all of the things you need, or tells you all the things you need, to conjure up demons. Now, it depends on your take on the word demon, largely, because according to this book, which, you know, arguably, if you're a Christian, you've stopped listening by now, but um, they're not all like, you know, and I've always thought this about demons, is that they're not all like, Rawr. some of them, I think the majority are like ambivalent, like, like so ambivalent, they're like, um, I'll just cut his head off and then I'll carry on with me day. You know, they're not asked. is my point. I don't think demons are asked. Do you know what I mean? We picture them like, Rah, I'm coming out your cupboard. Rah. No, I think demons are like, let's make a deal. Okay, I'll give you the power of X and um, you go and cut that guy's head off. How about that? Yeah, right. Where's my Rubik's Cube? I think they're more like that. Anyway, the illustrations in this book are magnificent. The one criticism I'll give it, right, is they start truly epically magnificent and they end magnificent, but there is a decline. It doesn't necessarily go from, like, something that you'd frame to, like, a stick man with a, a trident, but there is a decline. I think they run out of ideas. There's 72 demons, do you know what I mean? So I think, like, four of them are crows just facing different directions, for example. Uh, but there's some amazing depictions of what these demons are. Amazing ones. We all know Pyam... I say we all know, like everyone knows this. 
But Paimon is always depicted as being like a very deep in thought prince as a stride, a camel. Um, and that's done really well within this book. But as I say, if you've got kids, probably don't buy it because the last thing you want to do is come home one day and there's a donkey with an owl's head in your kitchen going, who for art thou? Um, so maybe don't buy it if you've got kids. But it's a wonderful piece of, of occult history. It genuinely is. Plus you have, of course, the fact that it's Crowleyan in terms of its approach to the subject of <laughs> demon raising. So this is quite a dark review, but as a piece in its own right of art, if you will, ask Asia, little pun there, little occult joke, but as a little uh, piece of art, it's two thumbs up beyond the sky. It's really good. It's really like intriguing, dark. I know a lot of when I do these reviews, many people will say, I don't know which one you mean, like, Point me in the right direction because there are many lesser key of Solomons. There are many Goetias and there are many illustrated Goetias. This one, as I say, it's um, edited and has an introduction by Arundel Overman. It's like, what colour would you say that is? It's like a dirty beige on the front. It's got um, sigils going around the border. In the middle is, I'm not too sure what demon that is. But it's a man on a line with a spear and the title's all in red, okay? And I, I, I can't describe it any better than that, really. But it is, I'll tell you what, it's dead weird. Well, it's not that weird. It's not even, like, synchronicitous. And I don't want, I'm not trying to say, ooh, look, ooh, how bizarre, how bizarre. Maybe he's, like, you know, got some sort of magical things happening. No, 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 no. Not trying to say anything like that, but what is weird or... Very, very, it's just a coincidence. But there's been a few occasions, because I, I, you know what I'm like reading, I read three pages of anything and I fall asleep. So it's taken me quite a while, even with pictures, because I've got the attention span of like a three-year-old. Um, but what has been quite weird, so all of the demons in this book, they give you allegedly, or they all have their own speciality. Do you know what I mean? So like Paimon will give you X, like someone else, like Asmaroth will, Asmaroth or whatever will, Astaroth even will give you X, Y, Z. So let's say, for example, there has been genuinely about three occasions where I've thought, or say Becca said, for example, the fuse has just blown on the oven. We're going to have to get someone out. And I, thinking I'm Johnny Mandy Pants, I went, I can fix that. And then I've thought, no, I can't. I'll probably die from electric shock. And I've picked up the book and I've started to carry on reading and that demon that it's on the page of will be like, he giveth the power, the knowledge to man of dealing with fuses blown in ovens. You know, for example, every, it's happened like three times. And I'm like, are you asking me to conjure demons? Is this like some sort of thing? Because I'm not going to, you know, I'm not an idiot. I mean, I am an idiot, but I'm not that much of an idiot. So, but anyway, in closing, if you like the look of occult drawings, pictures, and things like that. You could cut them out and frame them. They're beautiful pieces of almost wood carvings, wood etchings, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'd say go and give them a give it a look. It's about uh, 12 quid on Amazon, and it's worth every penny, I do believe. So go check it out. That's my review. Two thumbs up. Mm, should I say, I feel, you know what? The Catholic in me feels bad saying two thumbs up to the sky when talking about a book to raise demons. But, so you know what I'll do? One thumb just below the clouds, just in case God sees. The other thumb just peeking above so that God might go, is that one of Kev's thumbs? And they go, no, he always puts two up. All right, then forget about it. But we all know it's really two thumbs up to the sky. Okay? Shh. <laughs> Let's move on to my favourite part of the week where we get to listen to your true paranormal experiences and it is my favourite part of the week. Yes, it is. Despite what I might tell Becca. I, so I'm lying to someone, aren't I? Probably myself, my therapist would say. Anyway, we've had an email come in from Ma, and it's a very interesting little email. And Ma writes, Hello to the three of you. So on behalf of all of us, Hi, hi, Ma! I wanted to share an experience that I had about a year ago. It's one I still can't totally understand, and I don't know what to believe about it. Nevertheless, it happened. 
It was a super cold week over winter, and my place of work was shut down, so I had some time on my hands and was looking for some entertainment around the house. I thought about downloading some of the tacky ghost detecting apps for my phone, and I followed through with that thought. There was one app I hadn't used before, and it was for detecting human-like figures. In an empty space, using a camera on my phone that's capable of detecting depth of field in a space. It's like the SLS cameras you see on most ghost hunting shows. I scanned the camera around all of the rooms, slowly, in the hope something would happen. I noticed nothing except my own figure being mapped out into a stick figure when I went into frame. Something, however, did show up that wasn't me. It was in the living room. It was much smaller than I expected a figure to show up as. To the right of my couch, in the front room, in front of some shelves near the floor, stood a small mapped out stick figure. It was about the height of the couch, so maybe one metre tall. Obviously, I looked at the space with my bare eyes and saw nothing. There wasn't even material objects that could resemble a human form which could cause a mistake. Even if I panned the camera over to where long coats were hanging up on hangers, it wouldn't map out a figure. But it did in this corner by the couch, where there was literally nothing. The shape of the little stick figure looked like it was crouching, even though it was so small. I didn't think too much of it. I thought maybe even that the program may have planted these figures in, in certain spots in the area for entertainment purposes. Either that, or it was a glitch. Probably. Maybe. It was fun to use regardless, regardless of what that was. I continued to use this app over the next few days while stuck inside from the cold. I felt it was a bit odd that it kept mapping this small figure out in my living room. Any day that I used the app, the figure would show up. But it would only show up in that location. Occasionally it would move from left to right, but always stay within about a foot of its original location and it kept a certain stance, like it was crouching over a little bit. Fast forward a few days, and I matched with someone on a dating app. After we met in person, and realised we got along platonically, she came to hang out at my house, so we could play with tarot cards and watch TV. Being that she was open to tarot, and the idea of otherworldly paranormal things, I felt it was safe to tell her my story that I had a haunting from about five years prior. And before you ask me, yes, I've sent this to you. You read it out on your podcast before the format was revamped. It was the haunted art mystery. I've been listening to your podcast since the Beatles and alphabetical terms segments. I'm a fan of every phase the podcast has been in. Thank you very much. I ended up telling her the lengthy ghost story from years prior and asking her if she had any. She told me some spooky stories and then tells me that she's good at sensing where entities or energies are when she goes into a place. Now the next part is when I get spooked officially. You see, I never brought up the SLS app, the figure mapping out or anything else like that to her about what I'd experienced. To me, that app was just a game. Her and I were sitting at a table in the room next to my front living room where this figure was mapped out over and over. We're facing each other whilst talking, and her back is towards the area where this figure was always mapped out. After she tells me she can sense things, I couldn't help but ask, So, do you feel anything in this house? Without any hesitation, without any doubt, and without even looking behind her into the other room, She motions behind her, with her hand, and points somewhere she's not even looking. But I can see where she's pointing. And it's that exact spot next to my couch, in front of the shelf. 
where I'd seen this little figure show up on the SLS camera for the last week. She still doesn't look in that direction, and seems a bit hesitant to tell me what she feels over there, as if she's afraid of outing its presence. In a serious and somewhat nervous tone, she tells me that something has been hanging out there for a while. She said she noticed it since she came over. She also said she can't tell what it wants, but it's waiting for something and acting like an observer right now, and has liked watching me. She couldn't tell if it was curious about me or waiting for me to do something specific. After a while, she even walked over to the spot and bent down a bit and said, It crouches down like this, as if it's attempting to hide. Now I'm officially creeped out. She tells me, though, that the more she brings attention to it, the more upset it's getting, that she was outing its presence to me. Eek! Eek! This spot where this thing was was the only place downstairs that has a view of all of each room that is on the downstairs level. And from this spot, you could easily watch what's happening anywhere in all of the rooms while still being out of the way of footfall. If there was actually something residing there, acting as an observer, it had a perfect view of where I sat to work, where I sat to veg out on TV, wherever I was. After she left, I opened the SLS app again. I scanned the area where the figure had been showing up for the last week, and the figure wasn't there, and it never shown back up in the same spot. I still use the app to scan rooms in my house from time to time, and I haven't seen it show up anymore, nor have I seen anything else since. I don't know what the fuck that was about, but it definitely was. Wishing you all the best in these days, signed, Ma. Well, thank you, Ma, and what in the living hell was that? Now, those figures, um, those SLS cameras, I'm the first to debunk them. However, I will caveat it with this. Usually, there is a human-esque shape that causes that mistake. You know, I've used a similar app, and I've had it where it's looked at a hoodie of mine and created a stick figure that's danced. I've even done a little joke video about it. But I've never pointed it, for example, at a blank wall and something's appeared. And then, as you say, if you scan everywhere else and go back to the same spot, it's there again. That's weird. That's beyond weird. When you double in the authentication, if you like, of someone with an alleged gift coming in and saying, oh, by the way, there's a spooky little demon thing in your corner. And you know what's very interesting? The fact, you know, we always talk about, you know, don't give attention to these things and they go away. It's kind of validated in this experience because of that individual saying, it's getting angry the more that I'm giving it attention. You know what I mean? Maybe there's a correlation there between when we get these horrific stories of things flying around and all this other stuff, it's because people are poking the bear, so to speak. Speaking of poking bears, not that she's a bear, um, let's all head up the stairs, it turns out, to the turret of terror. Yes, indeed. It's time for Becca's Reddit Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Paranormal Reddit Corner with Becca. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the highest point of Wintag Towers because as we found out last week, Becca does not have a corner in the dingy basement, do you? No, not a basement. You have one in the luxurious towers of Wintag. That's right, the turret. In the turret. So should we rename Becca's Reddit Corner to Becca's Reddit Turret? No, because the corner's in the turret. But isn't a turret round? You can have a corner of a round. What? Round the corner? Wee. Anyway, how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. How are you? 
I'm okay. What's new in your world? No, not much. I feel hungover. Do you? Yeah. Mm, I don't drink. Did you have too much Diet Coke? No. <laughs> Is that a yes? No, I'm tired, like genuinely tired, like I haven't had any sleep in about a good six hours. Yeah, six hours wouldn't do me. Yeah, I might have to have a Red Bull. I did buy some Red Bull before, so I might have to have a Red Bull. Anyway. Yeah, that'll do it. Not like, you know, actually getting a good night's sleep. Don't, don't no, consider no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Caffeine before sleep, but always. Ugh. And that's how you get the best dreams. Um, do you know any ghost stories? No. No one told you any? No. No, none of, no one you speak to talks to you about ghosts, ever? Yeah, plenty of I, I tell you when they do, so. Well, that's true. You've had nothing recently then? No. Okay. But um, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll be on your travels soon. So maybe... Maybe. You'll get some new blood, as they say. But not to worry, because that's not what we're about here. We're about the stories that appear on the site known as Reddit. 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 Um, And this is the story I've picked out for you. And I've picked it out... Because it had an, it wasn't because of the title, it was because of the sentence after the title, which made me think, ooh, so I have no idea what it is, the story. So you've only read the first sentence of the story? I've read the title, and mm-hmm. I've read the first sentence. And you read the first sentence and thought, yep, that's the one. This is the one. Okay, well, I'm interested to see this first sentence. Okay, there you go. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Whereabouts is this taking place? What do you mean, whereabouts? The turret. The what are you doing? Why? Terror? We'd never say things. I d- I say welcome to Reddit Corner. I give you the title and we begin. Why Why are you complicating this? We're in the turret. Carry on. We've already said this. Turret. Carry on. Get over the location. You're being a bit of a bore now with the location. Well, well, I've spent the last 85 million seasons thinking I was in a basement. Get over it. I'm over it. Welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Sternly said. Well done. The title of this story is Weird Sleepover Experience I Had with a Friend. Ooh. Let's begin. So the first sentence that hooked Kevin was, I haven't used Reddit since 2021, but oh my God, I need to share this. Bam, bam, bam. So what could be so scary that after three years of not using a social media site, you decide you're going to download the app, you're going to re-log back on, and you need to share this scary story. That's what drew my attention. Okay. So I've always believed in ghosts and stuff like that, but on my birthday, me and my friend wanted to do a Ouija board. So we made a crappy paper one and used a water bottle cap. It doesn't sound like he wanted to do it that much. That's like saying, on my birthday, I wanted to go to the, to, to the Bahamas. So me and my mates went down to the local sand pit and um, pretended we were in Bahama. See, what you're doing there is mistaking the causation here. So it was on my birthday, me and my friend wanted to do a Ouija board, not me and my friend wanted to do a Ouija board on my birthday. So it's got to the birthday and they then decided they wanted to do a Ouija board. Ah, they haven't planned in advance to do a Ouija board for the birthday. Yes, exactly. It wasn't part of the birthday plan initially. It was on the day. Well, then we can, I think we, we all agree we can continue. We all agree you can pipe down. Agreed. We figured out quickly that Felix has an attachment and has for a while. The whole time if he was touching the water bottle cap, it would only spell out mama every time. So we were obviously getting mad, so I decided to do it myself, and it stopped. It was my aunt, Kristen, and you could tell the second Mama stopped, and it was my aunt... What what nonsense is this that you've given me? This is, like, really <laughs> impossibly hard to... Re- Believe it or not, I'm making this clearer than it actually is. It's even I worse. Imagine, well, let's try and get through it. Let's do our best. So far, I've held back on a Bohemian Rhapsody joke already. So go on. Right. So Mama... You know what? I might... I, I am... I'm just going to give up the ghost... We now and kind of stop trying to amend it. I'm just going to literally read it word for word. Okay, because okay, no, sometimes we'll try. I try and make sense of it as we go. Yeah, we'll try and decide for it as we go. Yeah, um, obviously getting mad. So I decided to do it myself and it stopped. It was my aunt Kristen, and you could tell the second mama stopped. And it was my aunt. You felt relaxed and like you were safe. Then Felix joined again and it was still my aunt. And she spelled out stop. We asked what happened if we didn't stop. We were scared and stressed. It wasn't my aunt. 
hell. It spelt it was Mama again. We we said goodbye and we were talking about what just happened and then he screamed and jumped back on me like he was moving away. Something touched my hair. What? Something touched my fucking hair. He freaks out. I was so confused. Then we could hear someone walking across the hall like they were running. So we turned on all the lights and my arm had a hand mark on it like someone grabbed me. We fell asleep with the lights on soon later, but it was so scary and I wonder what would have happened if I didn't do it by myself. Oh my God, <laughs> the things that are wrong with that. Right, okay, so who was Felix for well, a start? Felix, he should have been introduced, I, I get the feeling. Yeah, it should have, it should have been introduced. What do you mean, your aunt? What do you mean it was my aunt? Like, what was your aunt? Are you the saying spirit? that your aunt was coming so through? I'm, I'm implying that Felix, is, Felix, who it turns out is her friend, is has an attachment who for some reason is spelling out the word mama mm-hmm. on the board. Then she decides to have a go on her own. And then it's her auntie, who's a warm and loving spirit. And then Felix joins and she says, no, don't join Felix. But... But then we asked what happened if we didn't stop. We were scared and stressed. It wasn't my aunt. And she just put the word hell, like, in quotes. Like, what do you mean, hell? And then it says, it spelt it was mama again. Um, we said goodbye. Um, oh, yeah, we could hear someone walking across the hall like they were running. So you mean you could hear someone running across the hall? Um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that when they said, we heard someone walking like they were running. Yeah. What? Um, it was so scary, and I wonder what would have happened if I didn't do it by myself. You didn't do it by yourself. You did it with Felix. Uh, no, she, no, Felix stopped. She was pushing it at one point. And right, she okay. got her auntie. Right, okay. So, if this person hasn't used Reddit since 2021, I think they haven't I used reckon Reddit. I reckon the password, given the way that's written. I think they haven't used Reddit since they were nine, because <laughs> I think she's about 12, this person. Okay, so let's see what the comments say. Let's see if they back up our theory. Someone says, Ouija's are not to be toyed with. Even the most experienced people don't like using them. I would sage myself and salt any room you had it in. Um, And they said, we did. We had sage. We did it before and after. And we properly got rid of the paper board. Um, So what's salt any room you had in it? What does that mean? Because I'm familiar with sage. You kind of burn the sage and it goes like, it's smoky, doesn't it? And you you put the smoke around it. Blessed salt. But allegedly salt will do. I don't know what... But what do you do? Just scatter it? No, no, no. It's meant to be a barrier. So, for example, a circle of salt. If you stood in a circle of salt, you're allegedly protected. I'm familiar with that, but how do you salt a room? Well, you'd salt the entrances, basically. But... Right, but... So, for example, there's a really good... But if it's a barrier, if you do that and the thing's already in there, it's neither use nor ornaments, is it? The salt. You're just barricading it in. If it's already in there, yeah. Well, she's saying it's already in there. So what you so what what it, what I'm saying is what use is this advice to salt the room and what's the mean? Do you, if you don't know, it's okay. You can just say I don't know. No, I do know. The salt salt is a protect it, it. It's a protective. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of a physical thing. It's like a barrier. So it's like yeah, I know what you mean. You do a circle. I get that. Yeah. So it depends. They'd need to know where the spirit is and then sort of trap them behind the salt. What, and then a circle of salt yeah. is just going to stay there on the floor forever? Well, yeah, it's like on the in the Will Store book, he goes upstairs and without telling a single soul in the house, as a sceptic, he sprinkles a bit of holy salt in front of a doorway where this kid claims a demon comes through at night mm. in his closet and he tells no one about it, this yeah. journalist. And the next day when he comes back, the mother who thinks the door, who's been claiming the daughter's possessed... Mm. Um, is all wide eyed, wide eyed, and wired, and he's like, um, "Are you okay?" And then, who's that? It's Uber. Oh, okay. And then, who's that? I don't know. What's going on? Have I just have I just got like LinkedIn? LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I've just got internet for the first time or something. <laughs> um. Anyway, and then. He knocks back the next day with the documentary maker and he has to use the toilet. And when he goes upstairs, the part in front of the door, which no one knew he'd put salt down except him, Mm. the carpet's been ripped up and there's a bucket with bleach in it and the woman has been scrubbing frantically away at that bleach and turns out she's possibly possessed. Right, I understand what you're saying about salt being a barrier, but this isn't answering my question. Because if this person is saying there's now there's something in the house because we've done this thing, like they were running, there's a hand mark on them, blah, blah, blah. 
salt any room you had it in what does that mean like salt it's i get i get where you're coming from if you're saying a demon comes through this door that's fine yeah. you put the barrier down the salt would act as a barrier okay. but if, if i'm saying if i said to you right this living room's haunted there's yeah. someone in this living room and someone said salt the room right what's this? okay well i would smudge using sage to rid the room of any spirits and then i would salt the doorways to stop them getting back in. Yes. But I wouldn't do it at the, like at the, the doorways of the living room. I'd do it at the back and front door. You know, sage the whole house. So salt isn't salt, getting rid of anything? Salt isn't getting rid of anything. It's stopping something past And to say the salt, salt the room doesn't really make sense is what no, we're saying. It's, it's like, not a good sentence. It's not like shake them back. Don't just like start throwing but Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's just like sprinkling. It sounds really annoyingly yeah, messy. Unless they've got ghosts and slugs confused, which could be a possibility. Um, or the cook in the room. Yeah. Salt and sage the room. Yeah, really. Yeah. Leaving the oven for 40 on 120. Someone's just said, Mama Ghost? Question mark. What fucking helps that? I have no idea. Um, someone else says, I've actually heard this before. People playing on Ouija boards and an entity that for whatever reason wants to be called Mama shows up. What? It's one of the most common Ouija phenomena. What? Along with the figure eight. Figure I've, eight's not, and that's just... That's just General momentum, but mama. I've always heard this one's negative and a pain in the ass. If it grabbed you, I'd say it seems true. Stuff like that is never good. I got scratched at Eastern State Pen. Penitentiary. Casual way of just throwing in Eastern State Penitentiary. Yeah, like, do you, do you not want to give any more detail about that? No. It's a well-known haunted location. It's not. It's it's a. It's basically only. It's like um, East Drive now. Right, okay. So it's just for haunted groups to, or ghost groups to go hunting. Okay, fair enough. Um, someone else says, My brothers and ex played with a Ouija board a bunch of times about 15 years ago. After every session, my ex had a greyish discoloration on his knuckles and back of his hands. That's weird. Mm -hmm. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. That's almost like a, something corpsely has touched the back of his hand. Yeah. Weirdly, someone else just said, Go to bed. That a man. Yeah. And the person who posted the story said, has replied, dog what? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? What have we entered here? I don't know. I don't know what... What, what dimension is this? I don't know. Anyway, how street? Mm. Dog what? Who are you telling me to go to bed? What a flipper. Yeah. Um, but that thing about, like, the two things there, one, I've never heard of the mama. Being a well, apparently it's the most common Ouija phenomenon. Yeah, but so so so. It's always interesting that it's always two letters, which I always think could just be a case of two people, three people, four people mm. who are like, "Oh, it's moving, it's moving." Oh, what's it going to? T P T P T P, mm. and they're just excited it's moving. Go on then, tell us about the figure eight. What's what's just the momentum. deal with that? It's just momentum. So you start if you. If you believe... Oh, I thought it meant it was going to the number eight, like no, on the Ouija board. the figure eight, as in like... Uh, right, okay. As would that like, not... Um, could that not be interpreted as being the pattern for eternal rather than the number eight? It could be, but normally it's because two people are on or... It's normally because there's a... Uh, it's normally when two people are doing it and there are opposing sides of the board. Mm. Okay, it's a natural sort of... Um, idio motor pattern for mm. you to follow so we loop around near you we loop around near me we loop around near you and then we convince each other in a sort of follow you due that we're connecting with the paranormal right okay and uh, you know and the thing is I'm not poo pooing the idea that you might be because my whole thing people say ah it's been proven to be the idio motor effect as in like you're making the subconscious movement yourself you think it's going to go to mama so you're pushing it to mama no let's go my argument against that is it might be the ideomotor effect, but it might be because some level... If you're doing it subconsciously through the ideomotor effect, are you also picking up a message subconsciously that's coming out through the ideomotor effect? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I see. So, it's like, for example, um, I only got into this phenomena uh, once, and it was... But I've experienced it loads, and I, I only I realised what happened once. Basically, 
If you ever, you've had, you'll have had this and everyone has, has, has had this experience. You're walking down the street with your mate and you start singing like, um, Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? Then Britney Spears gets out of a car, starts shooting everyone in the street. No. So you start singing that and your mate goes, I was just singing that in my head. And you go, shut up. And you go, I was, I was honestly just singing that in my head. You've had that happen, haven't you? Yeah. Right. We all have. Now, I've witnessed why that happens. It's because it was playing in the shop they were just in. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but, I, but I've been the third person in that shop and recognised the song playing as two other people have not and have been distracted and have been shopping. Then three of us have left the shop. One started singing and the other one went, have that just been in my head? And those two were blown away that they thought they had this connection. And I was like, it's just been on in the shop. They were like, was it? I was like, yeah, 100%. Mm. but it's so you know I'm not trying to like debunk the paranormal that I'm just saying or psychic abilities or say synchronicities exist but what I will say is that sometimes we were a bit too quick to jump to oh my god everything's magical when in reality it's not it's just you've not you've been oblivious to something know what I mean know exactly what you mean yeah yeah so um so had, that story ended with them someone saying go to bed and them saying dog what dog what <laughs> well I think that's how we'll end this episode so <laughs> I'm going to tell you to go to sleep <laughs> thank you I shall <laughs> <laughs> she will anyway. dog what that's what we wanted okay so let's do it properly okay. okay well thank you everyone for listening Becca yes go to sleep dog what tell you bye everyone bye guys bye